guys, I'm in Orlando, Florida at the East End Market. This is a super cool business model that I really want to share. I've known John Reif, who you're going to meet in a few minutes. I've known him for a few years. He actually brought me down here, I think it was three or four years ago, to do some talks. And it was before I wrote my book. And um, they were inspired to start a farming incubator here called Fleet Farming out of this East End Market, inspired by some of my early videos that has led on to do great things and I'm gonna do more videos with, I'm gonna do some videos with them coming up this week, but I wanted to introduce you guys to John Reif here at the East End Market and show you this really, really cool business model that I think is a fantastic example of where capitalism meets a social enterprise, where you're doing good, you're helping other people, you're building other people's businesses and giving them a place to start and you're making money at the same time. It's an awesome example of that. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to John and we'll walk around and check this place out. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> gonna get to her? Let's do it. All right, man. Well, hey, we're here. We're here at Easton Market. The uh, end of the day, we still got a couple of the vendors that are open, uh, bars and restaurants at night. Um, we really hit our kind of peak usually around the noon time. So I'm gonna show you what's here, show what we're all about. I'm um, not sure if the camera will pick it up, but um, out front here, we've got a bit of a market garden it used to all be vegetables. Um, so actually how I know you, Curtis, is that we were doing market gardening about five years ago, trying to learn how to do some intensive urban farming. And uh, since then we've moved a lot into ornamental flowers because we've got some, uh, I got a gal, farm gal flowers here that grows pretty amazing uh, flowers and does teaches classes for us here. So that's a pretty cool connect. And then um, fleet farming, which you know about uh, is a backyard pedal powered farming uh, initiative that happens here and half of the garden is theirs. So I don't have to do it anymore. Awesome. I mean, I get in there and get dirty when I need to, but. Yeah. Um, well, you got a big garden at home too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we do. So um, this used to be a church. Um, it was a Baptist church that was vacant for actually a long time before I bought it. Um, and so this was all wide open when we got it. Um, the goal was to basically say, hey, I had been running with um, food entrepreneurs and farmers and stuff for a couple years doing festivals. And so then the goal was how do we bring them into some place and give them a place to incubate business between setting up a you know, tent every Saturday to having a permanent spot. So this is that kind of incubator space between I'm um, a farmer's market vendor to I want a real big brick and mortar. So many of the vendors that we've had over the years have gone on to open up other stores. We've been fortunate to be able to invest in some of them. Um, and then some of these have actually owned by the same people but have evolved. So this group here, Florida & Co, um, they source from some of the top farms in Florida. Um, the menu changes seasonally, which is great. We're all about that. Um, great Florida breweries on tap and uh, good wine selection. But the menu's always changing based on the season. You've got Old Hearth Bread, uh, which is like our area's like premier European uh, bread baker. Um, they've been never had a retail store before, so it's nice to kind of showcase them, get them uh, out and about, give them a, a face to what they were doing. Um, Hounds too, soups and sauces, so really great kind of southern inspired foods, press sandwiches, great soups. I mean, pimento cheese sandwiches, which is like a southern uh, thing that people dig coming here. Um, we've got um, La Femme de Fromage, so uh, our rock star cheesemonger. Um, she's got sources of cheese from all over the world. You can get flatbread pizzas here. You can get, um, they do a grilled cheese happy hour on Friday where they do beer pairings and cheese. Um, pretty dynamite stuff. Um, behind us is uh, Gideon's Bake Shop. And so they do um, these massive cookies uh, that are, they display in this case, so it's like this totally uh, awesome way to show it off, but they're doing great um, kind of award-winning cookies, and so we'll get to see that uh, when they're open tomorrow. This is Skybird, uh, Juice and Experimental Kitchen. They do everything from kombucha brewing to raw food to cleanses, kind of, um, I call it yuppie yoga, so it's kind of like, you know, a, a blend of hipster and yuppie. Uh, ports therapy, you know, we are a food hall, but you want to have some other things besides food. So uh, everything to take your boring porch, give it some therapy, uh, get it up and running. So really a popular place with uh, the ladies. And then a popular place with the men over here is freehand goods. So a lot of handmade leather goods. Um, Seth is in here most days cranking out um, wallets and canvas backpacks and all sorts of neat uh, retail items. Lineage uh, Roasting, so probably our area's premier coffee roaster. They keep winning national awards for their beans and their roast. So you can get everything from a drip pour over to uh, a great, you know, uh, cort cortado or what they call the magic, like this awesome small little uh, 
deliciousness. I think these guys were just setting up when I was last here. Yeah, they were just getting going. going yep, they are just starting that, yep. So farm and house, um, so basically think like farm fresh meals delivered to the house. So you can obviously pick them up here during the day, but they actually have a van now that'll go to your house. Actually, your phone will beep and go, hey, we're in your neighborhood, would you like dinner? Um, and so they'll literally pull up, open the window, you can walk out and get two meals. So for a dad, when my wife's busy, it's awesome. Yeah, done. So we've got um, 10 vendors down here. Um, we haven't had much turnover, and the turnover that we have had um, was you know, for good reasons. That Someone wanted to move on, they wanted to, like the farmhouse is gonna um, open up a bigger store. We have another group coming in. Um, we do a ton of pop-ups to give people an opportunity to kind of test out products and what we say, like getting market validated. So like, you know, you may think your stuff's awesome, but get it in front of a bunch of our customers to see if it's really good, and if not, tweak it. You it's know? a great way to incubate a business. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, the thing is, is like, local needs are diverse, and to the degree that we can serve this three to five mile radius really, really well, means that we're always gonna be successful, and but because we are so tailored to this community, we're worth visiting, because there's nothing like this where you live. Yeah. So we get a lot, I mean, the highest compliment is when I see a public bus pull up and someone get off with their wheelie, you know, bag from the airport and I'm like this was their first or last stop uh -huh. it's like love it yeah I so love it talk about the kitchen a little yeah there's some, it's sort of another type of incubator idea yeah so, be, that, right? so, so so sometimes the tenants use it but for the most part we're trying to get people like I said that kind of gap between market validating a product and and instead of having to rent a place for a month you know a kitchen and all the overhead people can rent by the hour here so I'll take you in there we've got four different stations um, we've got everything from um, people that do full-on proteins and you know, we've got a smoker and a grill to cookie bakers to marshmallow makers to farmhouse that's up in the back. So basically there's four different stations. You get a double oven and a grill or a double oven and a range. There's a wear washer, ice maker. And so a lot of this stuff is also a la carte. So if you need storage, cold storage, we'll rent you that. So it's all, it's all business. It's all, you know, um, capitalism at work, but it's also giving these people an incremental way to prove their business, grow their business, and when they're ready to scale, yeah. we're also running classes on how do you start and operate a food business, how do you do your marketing and branding, because we want Orlando to be a cooler place, and if we can incubate the people that are here to serve those diverse needs, then we win. Perfect. And then we also then attract people that are much cooler and go, this is worth you know, yeah. putting my roots down and adding to the culture that's here. So it's, uh, it's been a fun place to operate. We just celebrated five years uh, last week. So I didn't think we'd be here. I mean, I, you know, I didn't know. I, I was hopeful this would work and thankfully it did. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a treat. We've got um, a great ramen noodle restaurant that you saw right now. Right now above us, we've got about 35 people doing uh, our community yoga class on Tuesday nights. Um, so it's a, it's a cool place. It's a real place that people will come. Like we used to be closed on Mondays and the beauty of being closed was that everyone could take a breath because early on these were all owner-operated businesses. Now they've got employees that uh, can, can run the business so they're happy to be open on Monday and get that revenue. But we'd be closed on Mondays and people would still be out in the courtyard, yeah. like just hanging out. Yeah. So we knew we'd kind of found a way to sort of galvanize the community, give them a third place. And then when people started wanting to get married here, I'm like, all right, like we've done <laughs> something good. You know, that people want to get married yeah, here. Yeah. So, um, but it gives us a platform to bring in, you know, great people like you that, you know, we don't have anyone with your talent and caliber in town. So how do we show someone to run a sub four minute mile until we bring in someone that can do it? So yeah. you know, bringing in someone like you to show off what is possible, yeah. everyone goes, oh, pff, great, yeah. we could do that here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a treat to bring in folks like you and, and others and, you know, in different industries, you know, totally. from fashion to foliage to whatever, yeah. to go, there's cool shit possible if you'll just you know, give it a go. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you get into all this? Give us, the, give us maybe as brief as you can the yeah. sort of how you, where did this all come from? Yeah, yeah. so I was, I was born and raised into a real estate family and I kind of shunned it for a while. I did a lot of humanitarian aid work abroad and then long story short, came back, joined the family business, started doing like, you know, basically like big regional malls and like doing that type of real estate. Um, but it was all very cookie cutter. It was like franchises and stuff that wasn't, we had some businesses that were like maybe new to Orlando or to Florida that we brought in, which was great. People loved it, but so I was doing that and it was obviously paying the bills. I was learning this industry at the same time, I got interested in like local food and in, and in doing my own market gardening and side yard gardening just for fun. And I was kind of the only guy doing it in the town. And so it was like, I started being the gateway drug to other people experiencing that. So that started 2008. I started teaching market gardening and urban farming. And then we got to about 2010 and I went, there's enough people interested 
and I need more people interested, could I create a signature event that people would come to? So I rented the downtown park in my city, which is a suburb of Orlando, Florida, and we had a harvest festival. And it was bringing all the local farmers together four days before Thanksgiving, get all your local provisions from actual farmers, shocker, you know, from our area, yeah. and then bring in like artisan purveyors and, and food and mash it all up. And we'd have like a penny loafer wearing attorney and a full arm tattooed hipster all hanging out. And I'm like, all right, we're onto something. Like this is, this is solid that we've got that much interest. Food and farming can be this like galvanizing force. So really we did that for five years. Um, year four, I bought this building knowing that I wanted to have that experience every day, not just once a year. So we started handpicking a few merchants that we thought would do well here, ran through the economics and went, hey, you can afford you know, uh, a tent on Saturday all day. Could you afford that same thing every day? Uh, you don't have to set up and break down anymore. Like we bundled a lot of stuff, you pay one check. So early on it was people that were already like in farmer's markets and had some brand um, and so you, we took my personal brand, their brands, mashed it all up and made this place happen. And then everything else evolved out of the needs. So the commissary kitchen came out of the needs of those people and others in town. The event space, like why as a real estate guy do I want to be unemployed after every event? Yeah. But there's so many events that it actually makes more money than if I just rented it to an office or something. And it creates a venue for people to do stuff in town that's relevant to them. So it gave us a place, a sandbox, both to have the conversations around food and farming, but also to have the atheist drum circle on Saturday and the Christian hipsters on Sunday. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a melting pot for sure. And it's kind of a, it became a dichotomy of all the, you know, fun, diverse things happening in this area. Um, you know, we have a proper restaurant, which is probably the most normal lease. So like other real estate that I own is, you sign the lease, you operate your business. So the, so the restaurant operates a little bit that way where there's a, a bit more handholding here. But at, after five years, it's not a lot. Like yeah. these guys know what they're doing. They're expanding. Like we're helping invest in some of those guys. So it's really been a neat way to see, you know, that this is real. Like yeah. you should have homespun entrepreneurship, creating great thought provoking things. You don't have to look for a franchise outside of your city boundaries, like nurture what's here, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, that's been a big part of this. All right, so that's John and the East End Market. I'm gonna be here for the week and we're making some more videos here. I've got two other people I have scheduled to meet and if you guys have any other ideas of places that I should check out in the Orlando area let me know in the comments below all right guys talk to you later